Um, thank you. I will call the uh, regular meeting of the Temple City City Council April 16th, 2024 to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, if we could have roll call, please. Thank you, Mayor. Council Member Chen? Here. Council Member Mann? Here. Council Here. Member Sternquist? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Yu? Here. Mayor Chavez? Here. And before we proceed with our regular meeting, I'd like to call on our city attorney to report out on the closed session meeting held at 645 this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The city council did meet at 645, recessed into closed session at 649. Uh, the council was briefed on the one item of potential initiation of litigation, but no reportable action was taken tonight. And uh, the council adjourned the special meeting at 731 p.m. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> we'll now move on to our invocation. We're pleased to have with us again, Pastor Kelty from the Community of Christ Church who will provide tonight's invocation. So if you'll all please rise and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our divine creator, we thank you for this beautiful day and for this world that you have created. We thank you, dear Lord, for all that you do for us every day. You provide light and heat and cool. We thank you that we're able to live in this community, that we might enjoy the benefits of that community, that indeed we might indeed share that community with those around us, these benefits you have offered us. It's for this reason and reasons we'd come into your presence this evening to ask your blessings upon this group and upon all who are gathered this evening. May the city council and their staff have your wisdom to be with them as they seek to do those things that make this an even better community. We know not what the future may bring, but we'll ask dear Creator that in all we do, we might do for the next generation to make this a better world and a better place for all to come. That we might be able to look to the future with hope, anticipation, eagerness, with a positive outlook on life. That for the future generations may come and look back and say, to each other with pride that this was a good time to live in the city. This we thank you for, to the best of our knowledge and love. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Okay, if everyone will please face the flag, place your right hand over your heart, and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. You may be seated. Okay, we will next move on to item five, ceremonial matters. There are none this evening. And now we will move on to public comments. City Council will now hear public comments regarding items not listed on the agenda. Procedure to address City Council is highlighted on the first page of the agenda. And I do have one speaker request form, uh, Bruce McKicken. Bruce, you want to yeah. come on up? Okay, sure. okay, my, name is, my name is Bruce McKicken. I'm um, resident of Temple City for 48 years. <laughs> and um, just a couple of things I wanted to... Uh, Hey, Bruce, if you don't mind, pull that uh, up a little bit so we can hear you or speak up a little bit. How about now? Is that better? Yes. Okay, Perfect. sorry. Uh, Bruce McKechn, uh, resident for 48 years. Um, I went to the, uh, the meet the, uh, the captain today. It was very nice. I, I really enjoyed that. I, I was very informative. I got some feedback from him and from um, Frank, Frankie. And, um, but one of the things that my wife. Are we now calling him Frankie? Uh, oh, oh I'm sorry, that. Francis. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Frankie. <laughs> I like Frankie better. That's, that's nice. <laughs> it's more informal. Yes. Uh, my wife w was, uh, w wanted to use the restrooms the other day, and uh, there was a gentleman in the ladies' restroom um, behind the city hall, so she d didn't use it. So I just wanted to bring that point up. Are you um, talking about the restroom? Yes. That are right outside. Right here? outside here. Okay. Yeah. And um, and of course, I, I know you're, you've all, you have uh, uh, one of the agendas is the unhoused in Temple City. Um, we're you know obviously very concerned about that. Um, uh, 
uh, I call the city of Temple City almost every week. Um, I know the, the people that answer the phone by first name, by their voice, um, for illegal dumping in the alley behind where I live and on uh, the dead end street, down the street from per, on Persimmon. Um, and um, I wanted to thank the city for, uh, I'm gonna go to the meeting tomorrow and thank the city for planting a tree in my front yard. I was very excited about that um, last week. Um, just, uh, and I was talking to my neighbor the other day and, and he was telling me that there's been a lot of break-ins in my area and I had no idea. So um, I was talking to one of the gentlemen, and I can't think of his name, um, one of the um, uh, support you group. one of our staff? Here? Yes, this morning. And yeah, Ed, he mentioned- it was either Edgar or- Ed, uh, Edgar, I Edgar. believe it was, yeah. He was talking about the, um, uh, the blog. And uh, of course, I, I don't have a, uh, I'm not access to a computer, I'm computer literate, but I do, uh, I talked to I Elena, Elena, and she, I think her name was Elena. Eliana. Eliana, excuse me. And she she said she's gonna uh, get me in touch with, or keep me in touch with uh, the the activities and stuff. So that 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 really helps me. I, I just wanted to thank you for the time. Thank okay. you very much. Well, thank thank you, Bruce. Um, so I know our city manager was taking some notes, and we'll look into those items that you had asked about. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anyone else? If not, I will uh, close public comments and we will now move on to item seven, consent calendar. Items may be approved in a single motion as recommended unless removed for further discussion. If members of the city council or persons in the audience wish to discuss any matters listed on the consent calendar, please address them at this time. We have a motion. I'll move to approve the consent calendar. Second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call please. Councilmember Chen? Yes. Councilmember Mann? Yes. Councilmember Sternquist? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Yu? Yes. Mayor Chavez? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we'll now move on to item eight, public hearing. There is none this evening. Unfinished business, there is none. New business, there is none. Quiet night. <laughs> Easy pickings. Easy. All right, we'll now move on to item number 11, our update from our city manager, Mr. Mayor Cook. Thank you, Mayor Chavez, a member of the council. I'll be, I'll be brief. Um, this coming Thursday is our neighborhood watch meeting at Cloverly Elementary School at 5.30. There are tacos and beans and rice for those who want to bring themselves and their families. Children are welcome as well, um, so you, you don't have to miss a meal and you can be part of our neighborhood watch team. Our dedicated team, Francis, Deputy Bowie, Deputy Anchondo, and uh, our long-term uh, dedicated Deputy, De Deputy Lamb will be there to talk to, to the community about um, crime trends, issues that we're facing in the community, but also some other tactical things that city uh, re residents can do to protect themselves, both with the unfortunate facts of life, active shooter and those kind of things, some tools to help individuals just to wherever they are, in Temple City or outside of Temple City. So that's this uh, coming Thursday. This weekend we will have Earth Day in the afternoon, one o'clock at uh, Live Oak Park. 10 uh, ten, excuse me, thank you, Mayor Chavez, 10 o'clock. Um, our, our team, and we actually have our a tree team, uh, Jesus, uh, is, if you've never seen him chop down a tree, it is a work of art, <laughs> the manner in which he does it. He's absolutely amazing. Um, so West Coast Arborist, our, our, our contractor who does grid pruning throughout the city to make sure our, our trees are healthy and cut properly will be there as well as they have been in years past. So um, please come out and enjoy. A couple projects that are going on in the city in the next uh, few weeks, one of which is moving a little bit slower than we thought. Uh, if you remember, the county sanitation district came to the city several months ago about the trunk lines and the, 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 the technology that they're using to repair some of the sewers. Um, that is moving a little bit slower. If you see anybody out right now, they are just doing manhole work for the next couple weeks. As, um, as the project moves along, we will make sure to uh, communicate to the respective areas. The contractors will, the County Sanitation District will. We will actually have on our website as well. We're actually waiting for another revised schedule as we speak. So um, that will come out so the affected areas will know when intermittent sewer service will be happening as the project goes through. 
The other project that we will have going on relatively soon too is our road improvement project that we did that the council approved several months ago. Um, that includes now because of the bid that came in Garibaldi from city limit to city limit. Um, so Garibaldi is probably going to be one of the first streets that we do from city limit to city limit. Um, some residents will be receiving some notices. Uh, again, we'll have on our website contractor name, uh, phone number to call if there's any issues. Again, we're doing a, a process called grind and overlay, which does not close down a street for a period of time, but there is some disruption, there is some dust. They try to do their best to mitigate against that with sweepers and other things too. But there is some, there is some inconvenience at times, but this is of the methods that you can use to improve your streets. This is one of the, le one of the least disruptive and, and it gets a longer useful life for uh, the roads in the city. So those are the things, some of the things that are going on um, right now. Good. So thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you. All right, we will now move on to item 12, update from our city attorney. Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Nice, nice to have you back. It's good to be back. And I actually, uh, in looking at the agenda, I figured you guys could use a little bit of a report tonight. So I have <laughs> two items for you. Thank you. Um, one of them on use of social media by elected and appointed officials and city staff, and the other one, a very new case on development impact fees. Uh, so we'll start with social media. Um, in under two weeks, the United States Supreme Court issued two opinions. On one opinion, they said that an elected official could be held liable for blocking people on social media. Two weeks later, they said, well, except when you're not liable for blocking people on social media. Uh, the first case was called O'Connor Ratcliffe versus Garnier, and it came out of San Diego County, the city of Poway. Are these U.S. Supreme Court cases? U.S. Supreme Court, sir. Uh, in the Garnier, uh, the Garnier case, as it became known, because O'Connor Ratcliffe is longer, uh, board members of a school district had uh, social media pages, two of them, um, had social media pages that they had used uh, to help with their uh, campaigns. And later on, having won their campaigns, they continued to use those pages to share information about the school district. Uh, they had some, as you can imagine, over the last five or six years, they had some excitable parents. And those excitable parents uh, began to have pretty strong comments. And every once in a while, they'd delete them. So the Supreme Court said that if you're if you're using uh, your social media as an elected official, you, you can't block people from commenting. Now, you could block everybody from commenting and simply use it as a way to share information. But if you allow any back and forth, you have to allow all back and forth. A couple weeks later, in the case of Lindkey versus Freed, a city manager was using his private social media to bring people's attention to things that were going on in 2020. Uh, and actually uh, more so in 2021. Things like um, there's a COVID vaccine uh, drive by the county in which we're located. People that wanna go, here's the link. Um, he blocked some people who were making some pretty strong comments. That went to the Supreme Court and the court put out a test for all of you. And as the mayor will tell you, lawyers like to have tests. So. If the government official keeps a page as a private citizen, does not use it to hold conversations about government matters, is not authorized to act or apparently acting as a govern government official in using the page, then you can limit individual comments on the page. Um, basically, the best practice will be, if you're on social media at all, have two accounts on any platform have a private one for you and a public one for you as a government official. On the government official one, either allow all comments or just don't allow any. Share information, invite people to come to events, but don't allow them to comment back. On your private one, you can do whatever you want. Um, but on your private one, don't say things like, the city is having, uh, this, the city is interested in a task force on a certain, please apply. That's your government side. It's different to say the city's having um, uh, our fall festival. Come on out. It'll be fun for everybody. That's a private thing. That's something a private citizen would say. So just be careful with what you do. And if you're careful with what you do, then you can go ahead and block those really nasty people. Although I can see where that might 
be a little difficult to define. Oh yeah. Public versus private. Yeah. Um, and if I understand you correctly, this applies to all government officials. Don't have to be elected officials. Elected, appointed, the or employed. Case was a city manager. Correct. Okay. Correct. Right. Uh, the second case, Sheets versus County of El Dorado, came out late last week. Uh, and has thrown city attorneys and, and especially community development directors uh, into a bit of an uproar. Um, the issue in the case was whether legislatively adopted development impact fees could, tra could trigger a takings claim uh, under the eminent domain or condemnation and inverse condemnation kind of claims, saying that uh, this fee is unfair in the taking of my property. For years, the general rule that was followed was that if fees were set by the legislature for a whole class of projects, instead of being set on a project on an individual or ad hoc basis, then there was no possible takings claim. Uh, you just couldn't have it, um, which meant that anybody who brought a challenge to one of those fees had their challenge thrown out at the very first circumstance in court. In Sheets, the U.S. Supreme Court went the opposite direction on a 9-0 unanimous decision. And they said uh, a takings claim is possible. They didn't say that it was a taking. They just said it was possible. And they said that um, the court, in this case the California Appellate Court, had to go back and look at it, which as we know means the California court will kick it back to the trial court and say, trial court, figure out on the facts whether this is a taking or not. Did it go from California Appellate Court or from the California Supreme Court? It went from the Appellate Court, oddly in enough. Interesting. They took it directly, they took it well, directly Supreme, up. California Supreme Court must have refused to hear I it think then. they did. Yeah. I think they did, because they were operating under that general principle that, and, and what they said was, or I, I guess I should say a, a concurrence which rare in this day and age was authored by Justice Kavanaugh and joined by Justices Kagan and Jackson, so kind of a wide range politically. Uh, that concurrence said that a well-founded and well-supported fee that's applicable to a class of projects where there is the nexus to the impact and the overall amount of the fee is roughly proportional to the cost to mitigate could likely be upheld. That that wouldn't be a taking even though it was applied to the class because you've, you've done your homework, you've, you've figured out what is it that we're actually looking for here. So the two big <coughs> issues, at least for now, cities are going to face some challenges to their fees. There's no question. Less likely in a city like Temple City that is predominantly built out, has some development impact fees, a sidewalk, sewer, a few other things, but, but not a ton of, of development impact fees. And those, those cases will not be able to be booted out very early on at demur. They're going to have to go through some fact-finding. The second thing, and I know the um, city manager and I have talked about this, and when, when you get your next set of fees, you'll, you'll see it, they'll be better drilling down on the categories of projects when we're going to apply fees. So, for example, instead of saying a fee will apply per residential unit, um, if it's a, a sewer infrastructure fee, Instead of per residential unit, maybe we look at per bedroom, or maybe we look at per square footage of the house, or per bathroom. Something that helps us look at the actual impact, because the more specific you are, the more likely that that nexus and rough proportionality will be met. And that's what the concurrent opinion basically is saying. That's what the concurrent said. We want said. you to tie it in a little bit better. And, and I, I really do think that those three judges, again, from across the political spectrum, I think they signed on to that saying, we want to give some hope. We don't want cities to feel like they're in big trouble here. Um, and drilling down the language, it's go do the work. And if you do the work, you'll probably find that you're going to be okay. So a lot of the cities that are still, still developing or have um, large areas of land that need to be redeveloped, they're worried and they're really running fast on their fees. City manager, his staff will do it in their normal course. But if you see the fee schedule being a little bit more specific or more drilled down, that's why. Sir. Uh, question. Because you, you've been mentioning two types of fees here. Sorry. You've been talking about two types of fees. Sure. One is development impact fees. The other one is just general fees. Right. I think most of our general fees are not really 
development impact fees. Not at all. I only think that there are just a few development impact fees. So Correct. Perhaps Brian can bring it. The city manager can bring it back. Just, just, just to talk about the development impact fees because there are only a few of them. Certainly, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah. Do you anticipate that, even though this has been ordered to go back to California courts, that this is an issue that the legislature may take up at some point to kind of clarify what these fees may or may not be and give us a little bit more guidance? Because I, I think. From what I have seen so far from this council and this city, we do, we are, have been doing what the U.S. Supreme Court mm -hmm. wants us to do, but I don't know that all cities have been doing that. Obviously, I forget where this case came from. Was it San Diego? Or? No, it came from Northern California. Northern California. County of El Dorado. And, okay. and in the realm of bad facts make for yeah, a rough kidding. case, in this yeah. case, uh, there was a road impact fee for some of the farther flung areas of the county. And if you built in those areas, you had to pay a road impact fee. And the fee had to do with your frontage on the road. And this person wanted to put in a, and I forget whether it was 1,500 or 1,800, but a very small manufactured home on a concrete pad. And they, but the, their road frontage was quite large. And they said, wait a minute, this fee cannot be related to my Fifteen to eighteen hundred square foot manufactured home, which, as we all know, has a a lower price and is you know a place for people on a fixed income or a lower income. I shouldn't be paying this gigantic road fee just because I'm on a parcel that has a lot of road frontage. And so it caught the interest of some people that took it up. And and I I, I don't think the court was wrong. And to the mayor's point. Um, if you're not really drilling down on, on are your fees reasonable and it, are they really proportional to the impact, then, yeah, you can get caught as the county of El Dorado did. And speaking generally to your comment as well, very generally, yes. I mean, we've taken a very kind of diligent approach in looking at our fee structure. And we've gone through that exercise with it ad hoc count, uh, members of the council as well. But it, it behooves us, you, to Mayor Pro Tem's use, use point, there's a few of those fees that we do have that we should drill down a little bit further. And then we have clear, just, it's not that we don't, we have justifiable nexus now, but we can even refine that more to protect ourselves and essentially look everybody in the face and say, okay, that fee does have that nexus. And if anybody comes back with that case in the future, we're, we're in a very justifiable position. Yeah, I, I, guess, I, I guess we could say the more specific you are, the less the likely you'll find a lawyer to challenge you. Right. So we'll get as good we'll we'll get it as good as we can. We'll improve on what, to your point, all is already a good product and make it better. Although you can always find a lawyer to challenge anything, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mayor Chavez. Yes. Can uh, I? Yeah, I saw John coming. Get, may, may I indulge? Do we want to so, go back? Can you just go back to the yeah. city manager's yes. comments? Is for that just... it, Greg? Is that it for you? Okay, we're going to go back uh, briefly to. Uh, City manager comments and uh, Brian. And, uh, we'll go, all go ahead, of you know him, but John Barry, he's uh, the CEO of uh, Temple City Chamber of Commerce, and we'll give him a few minutes for just a quick update on the chamber. Good. Welcome, John. Thank you, and good evening, members good. of the City Council, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Um, I'm honored to be here tonight as the CEO of the Temple City Chamber of Commerce. I've been here for about a year, just a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, and we wanted to just give you a brief update of some of the things that are going on, both that the Chamber's up to, but also just sort of the state of the business economy uh, here in the city. Uh, and I think I'll start there just with the excitement in the last year of the, the new businesses uh, that have opened up. Um, we're seeing more restaurants, more notable restaurants uh, that are finding their place here in Temple City. Uh, a number of uh, restaurants and businesses are opening here from outside the area and they're finding this being their first or second stronghold in the San Gabriel Valley. And so we're, we're an attractive place for people to uh, open a business, especially restaurants, uh, that then get written up by the LA Times or other uh, periodicals as it relates to their w whatever their offering is. I'd like to say that it's because I showed up that this started to happen. I think this was happening <laughs> because of the policies of this body and the, uh, the work of the community to be welcoming and support these kinds of restaurants. Uh, but in, that, in the same vein, though, we are working very diligently in a couple fronts at the Chamber. Uh, we sort of look at supporting the business community, 
um, the individual businesses, and then the community at large. Those are the, sort of the three concentric circles that we focus on as an organization in service to the Temple City community. Uh, first, for the, the individual businesses, we are uh, doing a lot of work to reach out to new businesses, existing businesses, visiting them. What are the needs that you have? What are the concerns you might have? Oftentimes, they're very happy with the services and the response from the city. Sometimes it's a state issue. Sometimes it's a, just a general, like, how do we get more customers? Or how do we you know, do some better marketing or branding? And so we continue to reach out and, and, and assist individually, uh, whether member or not. Obviously, we encourage them to join our, our organization. Uh, but we are there to serve the business community at large here in Temple City. Uh, second in the sort of the business community component, uh, we are working to educate them, uh, uh, again, as a, as a as a group uh, through communications um, and through uh, forums and activities that we're offering. Uh, as many of you know, we have been, we initiated about a year ago a legislative lunch program that every month we bring in uh, or invite a local elected official or legislator from our area. Um, earlier this year, we had uh, Sheriff uh, Luna come out uh, and sort of it's a very large event at the State of Public Safety. Uh, this week, in fact, on Friday, we're having our newly uh, uh, appointed elected mayor, uh, Mayor Chavez speak to the group. Um, and so we've, we've seen a lot of people, a lot of interest in that opportunity to connect intimately with the people who are making decisions that impact the community and, and our businesses especially. We've also started two committees, uh, one focused on real estate, where our real estate and home improvement community can come together and, and collaborate and connect and build their business, uh, and one on workforce development, similar aspect. But with both of those, there's also a service to the community at large, where we're trying to help people improve their homes or improve their investment or find a, play, find a way to actually make their home here in Temple City. And on the workforce side, working with the school district and others to uh, really start to do some job training. This is a slow process uh, because it does require us to, to build out some programming uh, that we're piloting out uh, in the next couple months, but to actually create a program to expose our, our local high school students to careers, uh, and then from there expand that to others that may be out of high school, out of college, and that they can uh, support the uh, workforce that either lives here or wants to work here in Temple City. So those are two projects that are moving forward with active participation from our business and civic community. Those programs, along with our social events, um, are, are some of the things that we've been up to this last year. Uh, in addition to the rebranding uh, and sort of the, the new approach the Chamber and the Chamber Board has taken in service of the community, uh, we continue to develop programs that were uh, baby steps. I, you know, we could, there's a lot to bite, but it's a, you know one bite at a time. Uh, as we eat that elephant, as we serve our business community here in uh, Temple City. Um, I will say that we're, we're planning a couple activities this summer, hopefully, to get community together around supporting our local businesses. Uh, more on that uh, in the coming weeks. Um, and then we continue to uh, collaborate and work with the city, um, be a voice and a network between city issues uh, that, that businesses might face, city staff, and of course, your staff is some of the most responsive we've worked with. So thank you to, to your city manager, Brian, and the team. Uh, when a business does have an issue, they're on it, they're responsive. Even if the answer isn't what the business wants to hear, they're giving them the, the accurate and swift answer on that. So uh, we look forward to continuing this partnership uh, into the rest of this calendar year and into the future. Uh, and I appreciate uh, the relationship that we've been able, my team and I have been able to develop, not just with our businesses and our community members, but with you at the council and the city as well. So I just wanted to make sure that you know what we're here. I know you know, but publicly, and, and we want to continue this uh, partnership uh, as we go forward. And if there's anything you need from me, I'm always available uh, to you. Uh, just send me an email, send me a text, give me a call, and we'll be there for you. Okay. Thank you for the time tonight. Well, thank you. Is there any questions from council? Uh, tomorrow's event was canceled, though, right? Uh, the was, evening event, yes. The evening. To the mixer? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Don't Res show up. We'll reschedule. <laughs> it rescheduled for me. Okay, great. Okay, well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. We'll thank see you, you Friday. Sounds good. Thank All you. All right, man. take thank care. Have a good evening. All right, we will now, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. City uh, Manager, anything else? Thank you, you Mayor okay? Chavez. Okay. Uh, we will now move on to item number 13, council reports regarding ad hoc or standing committee meetings. First of all, ask if there are any reports that need to be given from anybody. Do you want to share ours? Um, did we have one? Oh, yes, we did. Yeah, sure. No, you oh. go ahead. Okay. I forgot about it. I forget the title. <laughs> uh, that was the one. That is CDBG our, our CBG D funds. Okay, do you want to <laughs> sure. go ahead and start? And I'll, so, I'll fill okay, in. so Tom and I met um, to take a look, and we were presented by staff from staff with a um, really nice list of the things that were 
feasible within the budget. And of course, those things that are nice, but we don't have the budget for. And um, staff gave us some really good input and we landed up looking at two specific issues. And mm -hmm. staff is going to bring um, back those two programs to see if they're feasible. So Tom, if you wanna. Yeah, no, you did, you covered it pretty well. Um, it, I, I wanna thank staff, first of all, for putting together, if you recall, when we, we set up this ad hoc, the purpose was to try to find out what different programs were available that we could use some of these monies for. Uh, and so staff put together a list of things, and they put together the list in a good way, as, as uh, Council Member Sternquist mentioned, that, okay, this is what we can afford to do, this is what we can't afford to do, uh, these are the, the limitations. And so it was a very inclusive list. After going through the entire list, we decided that there were probably two programs that we could take a better look at. Uh, one has to do with uh, mosquito abatement, which is always an issue near to dear to the council member Sternquist heart, of course. And uh, also our senior programs, uh, uh, primarily the, the meal program. And so we asked them to get some more information before we present it to council. And at that time, uh, we will meet again and then have some more information and bring that back to council as a whole. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, unless there are any questions, uh, anyone else that any other reports? I don't think there are any other ad hoc uh, meetings. No? no. Okay. Before we leave this uh, section, uh, City Clerk has asked that we establish uh, a commissioner recruitment ad hoc. It's it's getting to be that time again. Wow. Happens every summer, actually. Uh, we have six commissioner seats with terms that are expiring on June 30th of 2024 two on each of the commissions. Um, and so I would uh, like to establish that ad hoc committee. Uh, I would ask that our, our, our newly elected, uh, not to pick on him, but it might be something <laughs> interesting because I know we all, all of us up here have served at one time on that in one way or another. So if you don't mind being part of that, it basically is to go through the, um, the applications and to kind of weed them out a little bit and then for presentation to the full council for either reappointment of those we have or even consideration of new appointments. So if you don't mind being on that, that would be great. I would be glad to serve. Okay, and it, it really doesn't Thank take you. a whole lot of time, maybe one or two meetings. Okay. Great. Does anybody else want to be on that? Anybody else? Cindy's take, shaking her head. No. Uh, no? <laughs> no? You want to be on that? No? You, have you, who was on it last year? Do you remember who was on that last year? I thought it was I think you. I was. I think yeah, I was. Fernando, I think right. was it? Oh, Fernando. Oh, okay. Well, so you took over Fernando. There you go. So I think you should do it. All right. Well, if no one else is <laughs> chomping out the bed, I'll go ahead and do it. That's fine. Thank okay. you. All right. So, so, um, so that'll be uh, Mayor Chavez and, uh, and Council Member Chen will be uh, part of that new. And we'll, we'll work with the uh, city clerk to get those. I have asked the city clerk, however, to provide, and one of the issues that always comes up is the attendance records of the commissioners. And so rather than just provide those to the ad hoc, I asked her to provide that to the city council as a whole. So you have that information ahead of time. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, unless there are anything further, we will now move on to item 14, council items separate from the city manager's regular agenda. And I'll start to my left. Council Member Chen, do you have anything? Uh, that is not on the agenda that you would like to add? Um, it's been a great experience, but I have no, no report today. Okay, thank you very much. Council Member Mann? Yeah, I, I just want to mention briefly, just to maybe add to John's report for the chamber. Uh, one thing that I want to mention is uh, the board has also been active in recruiting no, new board members. Uh, so that has been it had been a challenge for a number of years, but I think as the chamber has reinvented itself and redefined itself over the past year, that has attracted more attention and more desire for uh, different members of the business community to, to participate. So if I re recall correctly, the last, the two newest members, uh, one was Kenny Chung from Happy Buddha, and the other is uh, a familiar face, Becky Cheng from Athens. Oh, uh, so th those th those are two great additions uh, to people who are very active in the in the community, 
And I think even, uh, I want to give, also give kudos to the board for uh, what I would consider to be a successful membership drive as well. Um, I encourage the board to consider doing that um, more routinely. Uh, that, that We got a couple of, um, at least the ones I'm aware of, just because I, I actually talked to the business owners, was uh, Cloverleaf Bakery joined as a member and Alice's Kitchen joined as well. So it's great to see, he ta John talked about the, the restaurants, so I think the, ch the board had always been very, they, want, they wanted more representation and participation from the restaurants. And, and understandably, they're very busy. Most of them are open seven days a week. So it's hard for them to be active. But I think there's a synergy with how the chamber is doing more events. And sometimes having these events either at the restaurants or ordering food to support those restaurants. So I think this kind of... Um, Synergy is something I would encourage the board to continue building and uh, very pleased with the direction that they've been going in. So. And um, on, on other news, uh, just really quickly, um, I have been keeping in touch with uh, our friends in Hualien County. Um, it seems like their recovery efforts over the last couple weeks have essentially stabilized and moved more towards things related to um, rebuilding, repair. So they're past the kind of initial really crazy moments. But it's, they've admitted that it's gonna be a long process, and a long and difficult process, just because there's, geographically they're large. They're rural, so there's the access, it's not the same environment that we're used to here in, in kind of the urban environment. So there's different challenges to you know, finding suitable land to build you know, something that we kind of take for granted in a flat area, right? Um, but uh, I, I did extend to them, you know, our well wishes. They were appreciative of our letter. I also want to thank the school district for also writing a letter of support. They received that, and they were uh, very appreciative. So, so I want to thank our, our partners at Temple City Unified and, and the superintendent. So that's all. Thank you. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because it was on my mind as to what's been going on because it's kind of faded off the news. Which is good because it it's not it certainly could have been a lot worse and I think there's lessons learned that we could look at as far as what we do here regarding earthquakes and they seem to if I guess for want of a better term be ready for it and they seem to be a lot ready a lot more ready than other places that have had these it was a large earthquake what was it finally a was a seven eight I think or something like that it ended up so being seven. Four. Four. Seven four? Seven yeah, four that's seven still five. pretty big. Well, good. That's good news. Thank you for keeping us updated on that. Okay. Uh, Council Member Sternquist, anything to add? Um, today, Council Member Chen and our city manager, we went out to celebrate the 35th anniversary of the Mosquito District. And um, they had a really nice display, different uh, people in different who have different roles at the Mosquito District showed us about how they go out and they trap, and we saw different traps. We saw how they use mosquito fish for um, helping with green pools. And so it was really nice. It was a nice event. They also had tacos. <laughs> and, um, how come it, we weren't invited? I did send, tell you all. I don't know. Did you remember getting an invitation? Yeah, I don't remember getting an invitation. I think by yeah. email. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. You probably didn't read it. <laughs> no, I read them. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, well, okay, well, good. I'm glad you had I a good time. none of you would go. Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> it was in the middle of the day? Because it was at 11 o'clock. Oh, yeah. It was right after the... Right after the calf day. Yeah. yeah okay. so, well, good. I'm um, glad you were was, able to go. It was really nice, and the CEO spoke, and I think one of the nicest takeaways from the event was this, the staff at the Mosquito and Vector Control District often don't get a lot of kudos for the work that they do, and yet they're out there protecting the communities, trying to keep us all safe, and their work sort of is just very much under the radar. So it was very nice that the CEO um, of the district very much acknowledged them and thanked them on behalf of all the council members, and they had a really good turnout. Good. So it was nice. Very good. Perfect okay. day. And that's yeah. it. Right. Thank you very much. Mayor Pro Tem, you? Um, Mayor, uh, thank you. Nothing to add. Okay. Um, so, uh, as uh, Councilmember Sternquist mentioned, uh, we were at the coffee. Was it 
Coffee with a cop or coffee with a captain? I got it both ways. That's what I thought. Sounds better. Okay. Uh, Council Member Chen was there. Our city manager Cook was there. I was there. It's a good turnout. A little smallish place, but you know Starbucks and uh, at the uh, I still call it the Applebee's Center, but that's old. But uh, <laughs> that uh, or across the street from it anyway. So or right next to it. But it was a good, good turnout and a good event as always. And so I want to thank the uh, Sheriff Department for putting that on. Um, let's see, as far as, uh, one of the things that, as uh, John mentioned earlier, I've got the, I've asked to speak at the chamber round table this Friday. I know, uh, uh, former mayor Mann did it last year. And so it, it's becoming a pretty regular thing. So I look forward to that. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be attending Cesar Chavez day. I wonder if they invited me for a certain reason, maybe, uh, Chavez, <laughs> Chavez. I don't know. maybe, but, yeah, no relation, no, no relation. <laughs> Not that I know of, anyway. But, uh, it's an event that's usually put on by the second grade class at Emperor. <laughs> Every year, they think they've been doing it for 11 years. And you know who's in the second grade class at Emperor, right? Oh. That's <laughs> Chen's uh, son. And so hopefully I'll see him there tomorrow as well. It's a nice little event they put on, and they actually invite, and I don't know how many years they've had that, but uh, Cesar Chavez's grandson, Andres, comes to speak, and he's a wow. very, very good speaker, as Jerry will attest to, and yeah, he's, uh, does a good job. He's Timothy's the librarian's relative. Yeah, he's related to Timothy the librarian at Edinburgh. So, yeah, nice little event, so looking forward to that. Um, what else? I think that's about it. Um, so, moving along, things are going well. Um, hopefully it won't rain this weekend, so we'll see. Keep a good thought. All right. Uh, so now we will move on to additional public comment on items not listed on the agenda. Num item 16, I do have a speaker request form from Ms. Lee Z. You want to come on up? Come up to the podium. Do you have other, are these all the same thing? Or, or you just have two, two copies? Do you only have two copies? No. Okay. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, mm, go ahead. Uh, good evening. My English is not well, but I want to try. Um, I need you to understand what happened uh, to me. I live in this city. Uh, do you remember about two months ago, I, st I stand here to tell you, somebody stole my jewelry, that's expensive. But now, his man stole them, continue again, again. This time I lost very, very important information about citizen paper, the passport door. Okay, so you had some additional items that have been case. taken from you. So. Have you reported these to the sheriff? Huh? Have you reported this incident to the sheriff, the, the, the missing personal property? Have you reported that to the sheriff department? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I give this paper, go to uh, department. The sheriff department, okay. Yeah, but now, nobody care. So, how can I do? And cash money, take out. But uh, I'm very worried about that information. You know, very important. My passport and the citizen paper and the, my husband's passport and the citizen paper, a lot to take out. I don't know what can do, take it out. So I'm looking forward to my government and the, my police department helping me fight that war back to me. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, I just need. Okay, if you're going to continue talking, if you're going to continue talking, you have to stay at the podium. Only when you solve somebody. Stop okay. Her. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, unless there are any other persons to speak, uh, I will close public comments. Uh, before we adjourn tonight, um, and I'm glad that uh, Councilmember Mann brought up the incident in uh, in Hualien County, but we do. We, there was, as you know, in the news, uh, some terrible incidents in our sister near our sister city of Hawkesbury, Australia. This past weekend, there were some horrific stabbings in Sydney, and uh, as 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 we all know, we have friends there as well, and, uh, you know, they're fine. Uh, as you know, we're also sending a group of students there in August. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the areas that they go to and that I've been to is Bondi Beach and the shopping area that's around there. Um, I think it's safe to say, however, that unfortunately those incidences do happen. In fact, we have the same uh, kind of... Uh, reputation here that their parents are concerned that they come to LA and they hear all these stories about well LA I don't want our kid to go to LA well we hope that that isn't the same obviously going to Sydney because it is a very very safe place or at least always has been but there are those things that happen and so I just want to mention it and extend our prayers and condolences to those people in Australia and uh, you know hopefully you know they'll be able to get past those type of things and it's just unfortunate that the world we live in these days uh, has those types of incidents, but uh, they, they seem to be handling it fairly well. So I just wanted to uh, end the meeting and adjourn on that note with our prayers and condolences out to them as well. So with that, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you.